helping you or so you join us this Monday morning. <clears throat> we, this is basically an overview of street text. You know, working on social media can sometimes feel like eating an elephant. It's a gigantic task. <laughs> Uh, you can do it. You just got to do it one bite at a time. So we're just going to feed you the information one bite at a time and get you connected to the idea that we really want to see people succeed in their trials. They can see whether this is something that's going to assist them in their career beyond your trial. So part of that is just making sure you're connected to all the resources we have, which one, making sure that you get off to a good start with a really good um, ad. So we're really gonna focus on that and this, but also knowing that you have a coach that's gonna help you personally apply this. You have someone that's gonna kind of walk you through applying what we talk about today. So at any point you feel like any of this is over your head, just know that you have a guide that's gonna help you make the best use of this. Um, we're living in a day and age that's called the, you know, attention economy. Do you know what Facebook is selling you? They're selling you people's attention. I like, I've heard somewhere say that this is not really a phone. It's a marketing device. <laughs> this was a, invented as a marketing device. It's grabbing people's attention. So how do you work in that day and age? How do you capture people's attention, start conversation with people and grow a relationship? Well, it starts with not just the people you already know in Facebook, but we're gonna talk about a 15 mile radius around you. Facebook has something called the Housing Discriminatory Act. Is everyone aware of that? So you have to work with a 15 mile radius with Facebook. And with that 15 mile radius, you have an opportunity to meet people within a 15 mile radius using something called the Ads Manager. Has anybody ever had any experience with the Ads Manager? We like to, <laughs> yes, it doesn't sound, some of you don't look like you I had have. a good experience. <laughs> we like to call the Facebook ads manager the labyrinth of frustration and confusion. Talk about needing a margarita prior to nine o'clock in the morning. If you ever figured out how to use the Facebook ads manager, it was like a full-time endeavor that took all of your time and energy to do it. You think that you've possibly maybe launched an ad. The only thing you can be assured of is that Facebook's going to charge you for using ads on Facebook. It's not going to get you, it doesn't matter whether you get the results or not. So at the other end of this, we want to make all of this easy for you. We don't want you to have to use the Facebook ads manager, but we also don't want you to have to assign the task completely to someone else and you have no control over it. So street text was really bought well, at the beginning. People were like, well, why don't you just sell leads to people? And we said, well, we don't want to do that. We want them to, we want to enable them the ability to generate their own leads using a powerful tool like the Facebook ads manager. So what we did was we built streettext.com. You log into our website, you launch our already built easy proven templates that we know that will work and you do it within our platform. We then act on behalf of you and launch the ads in the Facebook ads manager, but we pull all the relevant information that you need to know into streettext.com. So you can now run effective ads, get leads coming in and have control over what those leads look like. And if you're not getting the results that you like, we teach you and we have classes where you can learn how to run again, a split test to get better results. So that you're kind of in control, but you're not having to go and get a full-time degree in social media marketing in order to do it because you don't got time for that. You have time for what's the most important part of this, which is follow up. We don't want to get you just the lead. And we're going to talk about how to get leads coming in through Facebook ads, but we also want to introduce you to our community so that you can spend that time that you're saving on what's most important, which is follow up, following up with people. When someone clicks, how do you turn this into a relationship? The lead is only as good as you can create a good conversation. Our ads are really about creating conversation because how do you build relationship? You build relationship with dialogue. It's not just about putting and plastering your face everywhere. It's about creating conversations with new people. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump in. We're going to use someone's account. We're going to show you how to best set up the ads to get the best experience. And it really has to do with split testing, two concepts. If your ad looks like an ad and it feels like an ad, it's not going to get a very good high rating with Facebook, especially within that first 24 hours, and you're going to pay a lot of money for it. So we want your ad to look like it's organic. It belongs in the feed and encourages people to click because you're offering something of value. That's one of the keys. The second step is something that 
even if you've been doing Facebook marketing for a very long time, not a lot of people are aware of. And it has to do with the fact that Facebook is randomly choosing your audience in the first 24 hours. But more importantly, they're watching that audience very closely for the first 24 hours. And they're asking themselves that question. Is this ad like obtrusive? Does it look like an ad? Because if it is, it's distracting people from where we want. We want their attention. We want them in their newsfeed. So they give it a relevancy score based on how those first 500 people that see your ad act. So how do you make sure that you are testing to land on the best, most receptive audience in your area? Especially going into the holidays, this is more important than ever. People are competing for that attention and you can actually win and have great results through the holidays when you understand the concept of split testing particularly for audience, not for creative. You're used to an A-B split test. This is very different and the results um, show out very differently on the other side of it. So does somebody have an account with Street Text that's already connected? You uh, got connected to your Facebook and we can use your account to demo. Anybody? I do. Okay, great. So we'll have Marcus pull up your account. Which one is, which one is this? Jonathan Wayne Warner. Jonathan. Yeah, I think I do too. Okay. All right. Found Jonathan. Cool. Let me share my screen. Okay. So everybody, if you've started trial, is gonna have a dashboard. It looks almost identically like this. I can your, the key though is you'll only have this is if you connect your Facebook ad manager. So when you start your trial, there is a connection because this trial itself is free. You get to experience the trial, our community, everything that we have to offer for seven days, sometimes more if, we, if you guys need it. Um, and, but your ads aren't, you're spending money with Facebook. So you gotta make sure when you spend money, spend it wisely. And Facebook will always inevitably spend your money. So. The key is track it. We're going to help you analyze it. We're going to help you make sure that every dollar you spend is effective. Um, and there's a couple things that you want to look at. So number one, how do I know if my ad is working or spending or whatever? Um, head to the ad section of your dashboard. This is where it's sitting right now. Um, so you can see Jonathan right now. I love that you're using the thumbs up down there, by the way. This shows me Shannon, you're participating. It's awesome. Um, what this really and shows you is that you can actually track all the metrics way better. You know, like we talked about labyrinth of confusion, frustrating, confusing that ad manager. It absolutely is. We make it as simple as possible because here's what you're going to be looking for. How much did I spend? Right. That's, I would need to know how much I'm spending. Um, and then with that, how many leads translated from that particular ad? So if you had an ad running, some of you may just initially go into the street text trial and said, you know what, let's, let's just throw it up there. And it just automatically goes out just like this one did, Jonathan. And you've reached, you know, it shows you how much you, how many people you've reached, what your cost per click is, how many people have clicked, 22 bucks spent, 13 addresses, because that's, we, so we break that down into the, on the seller funnel. And then out of those 13, three emails. Now, big rapids. Okay. Here's the thing. Everybody is going to quickly realize that we're all working within a 15 mile minimum radius. So actually, when you look at Big Rapids, think 15 miles around Big Rapids. And with that, instead of seeing the Big Rapids up here on top, we're going to actually replace that with some home emojis, surprisingly, um, because that's going to take care of 15 miles and it's going to help you identify all the towns and areas around those 15 miles. Because you may be getting great leaf flow right now. But who's to say people in Green Charter or Rodney or Stanford or all these other areas are saying, you know what, I don't live in Big Rapids, I live in here, right? Um, and yet Facebook is still throwing this out in front of them. So you're missing out on that opportunity, which can drive your cost per click lower and your lead flow up. I actually had a question on that. I couldn't figure out how to change the Big Rapids to some emojis or something like that. We're going to help you do that. I mean, okay. you could go in your ad manager and do that, um, but we're going to show you how to set up a new split um, and where you're going to, you know, the ideal scenario is that you run three identical ads for the first 24 hours to let the best audience define your ad performance. Because as you can imagine, Facebook's trying to develop algorithm within 24 hours and that it's only gonna get in front of about 500 people in that time. So 
there's no possible way for you to get a perfect representation of that 15 miles. But if your first audience starts clicking and clicking and clicking, um, that's going to be the indicator you're looking for. Because with a funnel like ours, I'll quickly show you. I know I'm jumping all over the place here. But this particular funnel, what Ira was talking about, 60% of the time, it, this has been up to 70%, depending on, on the time of the year, 60% of the time right now, it's producing at least an address submission. So that means if you're, if you're driving clicks and your cost per click is low, naturally six out of 10 times, there's gonna be at least an address. And then you're playing the, the percentage game because if we're talking about a 60% address, you know, click to contact ratio, and usually about half to a third of those pr produce an email and about a half to a third of those produce a phone number. Because what you're about to see as we kind of go through this funnel, it's, it's done dynamically. And that means it's not, you know, asking for all the information up front. Because if I actually click on your ad right now, it takes me into your landing page. And there's an extreme congruency between the ad imagery into the landing page, which produces high, like super high contacts. And this is not the, you know, the only thing we're working with here. The math, everybody I, I know is going to get some kickback and be like, oh, that's so boring. Why would you use that? <laughs> Ira, why do we use this boring generic map? It's because it's not about you. It's about them. <laughs> so sometimes people are like, well, I want to sell real estate. So I'm going to put a big flashy real estate. You look like an ad and people are so used to seeing ads and so used to getting rid of it. When you put a map, especially right now, I'm hypersensitive to what's going on in my area, particularly the map that I'm always on. So when I see a map of my area, it's so recognizable to me that I stop to see what's up. Like, what does this mean? Is there a COVID restriction happening in my area? What's going on? So I actually stop and that's the, the part. You wanna stop people's scroll because when they stop their scroll, they're then gonna read the copy. And if that's something that's important to them, they're gonna click and they're gonna leave you info. So it's really about getting people's attention around what matters to them as opposed to what matters to you, which truthfully is listings, right? So you right. want to start there. I mean, and also think of it from the term of your Facebook newsfeed, right? When you're scrolling down your feed, like it doesn't look like what you're seeing right now because I'm showing you as a desktop. So when you're, when you're, did anybody, has anybody seen the social dilemma yet on Netflix? It's pretty interesting. Oh, you got, got one. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. So the the key is you got it you're interrupting their feed and then they're going to continue to to post things in your feed um like it so at this point think interruption based marketing as okay i know that stats right now are showing me that your homeowners and buyers are there for at least an hour on social every day that's what it's showing me and that means that <clears throat> billions of people i think the latest stat that i saw was a couple billion people on facebook and it continues to grow so all your homeowners and buyers are there you know, I know TikTok is new and Snapchat and all that stuff, but we're looking for buyers and sellers. And this is the generations that you're going to be getting sellers, especially Generation Y, Baby Boomers, everybody's connecting on Facebook. So if you position an ad like this in their feed and they're, they're just pause for that second and consciously decide to put in information, then it's so much about the experience you provide on the end of, end of that click. So you guys are about to see as we go through this funnel, how the information is collected from their end, from their perspective, and what you're gonna do to create an experience the moment they get into their inbox or text message. Because if you do get an email, automatically an email will be sent out from you starting with day one and then day three, and then there's an entire nine month long drip campaign built in for you on the, on the uh, seller side. And if a phone number is collected, there is a text message assistant, we call her Julie, will automatically text your leads, but you have to activate the SMS, number one, pick a local number. So something local that, you know, anybody in that 15 miles would identify with it. You're going to see it's a, you know, you can find something close enough to your phone number just by the first three digits. And, and then really the, the key is if they do get the automatic text, it's for you to actually then continue the conversation because the actual text messaging sequence stops and you continue the conversation. If they don't respond to the text message, it, it's built for up to five text messages to continue going. But what we like to do is actually work with you one-on-one -on -one and customize that because you don't wanna make it feel like an AI. You know, 
and right now everybody's got to deal with the same script until we go in there and actually change it to reflect the language you would personally use. I have so many cool people that say things like amazing or awesome and you know depending on where you're from and what you, words you use regularly you have to make it feel like that for people to connect. So let's go into the the funnel quickly as if we were the lead and so again also Jonathan when you see people I'm glad you actually responded here social is so important to build organic relevancy on too. So if you get Deborah going in here and anybody else for that matter, like liking it and loving it, always put your mouse over that and see who's doing that like Joe and Karen, because you can actually send them a personal message of PM too. Um, yeah. And let them know, hey, this is a complimentary service. It's my way of giving back to the community. I'd love to actually connect with you and provide you a home value, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then anytime you actually start commenting on here too, it organically builds relevancy as well. Yeah. And then a lot, of, a lot of people don't realize that you're paying Facebook for this ad, but why wouldn't yeah. you actually share this back to your personal as well? Yeah. Because when you actually share this, mm -hmm. there you go. You can share to groups, you can share to your page, you can share on a timeline, you can share, I think, publicly. And if you do share publicly to your own personal private news feed, just acknowledge to say, hey, friends, um, you know, and, and community, um, this, is, this is a complimentary way of me giving back. Um, you know, if you do submit your information, I will be in, in touch with you shortly, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> that being said, let's get into the funnel. So if we go into the funnel, this is the first thing they see. And remember, it's happening usually on the smartphone. So when I click on analyze my property, what you got to know is like, I'm usually, this would be on your thumbs. And it's kind of automatically populating depending on what you're putting in there, which makes it easy for that homeowner. Soon as the information is submitted, that right there becomes an address. And so what you got to look at is when you go to your uh, contacts, you're going to have two sections you're going to look at. You're going to have your um, contacts, which is anybody, an address plus an email. And then you're going to have your addresses and your addresses, just like I just came in right here, are going to stay gray. <clears throat> okay. So you don't know why they stop in that moment. They could feel, I don't want to be solicited, right? I don't want my information given everywhere. It could be a million different, it could be a phone call that they just got. It could be a thousand distractions. Don't always assume it's just, they don't want it. Um, and this is because, and then we have several strategies for those guys. I mean, the obvious is mailers and you could pull up tax records, true people search, spoke you, all these systems that you could use to find out more information and create a connection with. But the moment they submit their email, they have to provide email permission to be contacted by you. So this is a really important defining moment because what we want to teach you is as if, as if, you know, as you know, like as soon as I submit this information, now like that becomes a contact. I'm in the, I'm in here as a contact. Um, and we're going to show you some cool things about what you're going to look at as you view this contact because no matter what, as an address and email is collected, it's going to start pulling information depending on what it can find on the internet. Um, you know, and me, for example, I have a bunch of social connected to my email and some people do, some people are public, some people are private. So it's, it's it can um, unfortunately just pull on their Facebook profile. That, if that was the case, everybody would be like on cloud nine, but that's a privacy issue. If their, if their emails associated to social, it will pull in. So we're going to show you how to find people on Facebook too. Um, but just so you know, it'll show you if the email has been provided, has been um, verified, as well as if they've given you permission. And then the cool thing is too, a lot of times you'll be able to see that home in the Google satellite view. <clears throat> and then also what you're going to need to know is that at that moment in time, the email is being submitted af after the address and that doesn't stop the funnel, you have an automatic drip email campaign that's shooting out. So this is where you're going to be tracking to see what's being sent out. And right now it's pretty generic. It's basically going to say, Hey, just want to let you know that I received your Facebook request for the property evaluation of 133 Glenridge and I'm on it. Are there any updates or renovations that I should be aware of? And right now it's got your phone number and that's it. Um, and you can see like who's opened it and so forth. Like this 4792 Charles at Gmail went somehow opened it a hundred times. <laughs> Seems like he's pretty highly interactive. Yeah, so there's the one um, in my funnel there that I already asked for home evaluation that I'm sending him today. Okay, so we'll, and we'll talk more about this. So, so, but the key is what I wanted to kind of emphasize to you is what we want to create with you is an experience that looks like this. 
Make sense? Because let's think of it from, from a, a very basic perspective here, guys. You're digitally door knocking. So if you can make that connection right now is that I'm actually throwing an ad out there that's saying if someone were to buy your home, would you sell it? Find its value in the current market. Basically, they just opened their home to you. So would you want to be there with a little letter on the ground and ring the doorbell and then doorbell ditch and run as fast as you possibly can away? <laughs> no, hope not, right? Because if that happens, that, that letter on the ground probably gets tossed in the garbage or the recycling bin. And it's, it's no different than if you're using a very um, generic HTML based email. It's because they're like, oh, I feel kind of bait and switched. I was asking for a home value and now here you're asking me some questions. I don't know who you are. I can't see you, right? No body language, no tonality. So we're going to work quickly with you to, to create an experience just like this. And that's going to be a massive, like it doesn't ha you don't have to use um, this type of video software. This is called BombBomb, but there's different ways to do it. And at the very minimum, we want to actually show you, get your email signature in there, personify a little bit, and that's going to actually get you conversation started a lot faster. Um, now, heading back into the funnel, it doesn't stop with just the email collection, because if they get past the email, now all of a sudden they can tell us more about their home. Does it need a bit of work? Is it you know, a drop down menu here? Um, is it need a lot of work and so forth? And sell date, immediately one to three months, within six months, six plus months, just curious, refinancing. You know, hey, Ira, what do we talk about in terms of uh, putting weight in this part of the funnel? Do we, do we, do we, does immediately versus just curious make much sense? Yeah, it's basically people have lots of defense mechanisms and just curious is one of them. It means like just I'm going to keep you at an arm's length until I know I can trust you. We have plenty of people who come in as just curious and ended up with listing appointments within the week and listed their homes with agents. We also have the opposite. We have plenty of people who had an immediate come in and the person never even responded to them. Immediate is I want it quickly. I'm going to put immediate so you do a rush on this because I want it fast. So never treat everyone as if they're just curious because then your tone that comes back in your communication leaves you open for discussion and conversation, which leaves you open to discovery. That's how an agent a couple of weeks ago was able to get the landlord that didn't even submit the home value into an appointment for a listing. It was because the person in the basement submitted the home value because they were interested in buying it, but their financing fell through. So the conversation generated them reaching out to the landlord, which then the landlord in turn ended up saying, how did you know that I was looking to list and ended up with a listing customer? It's all about conversation. 100%. Um, and so as we get back into that funnel, it doesn't stop there. I'll kind of just stop sharing my screen for a second. Here we go. Okay. Where are we? There we are. Okay. Can you guys see it, everything? Perfect. Okay. So it's when they submit this, it's so okay. What's step one? Address. Step two, email. Step three, right? So you can see how these, these phases, sequence, sequences all collect information accordingly. So if they get to the email and then drop out, you still got that email, which is why you would want that automated responder to be a reflection of the questions you have to create the process. At this moment, here's where you can kind of go in. And so Jonathan, you know, I think the key is now to just look at this process and say, what can we do to personify this? Number one, there's a little empty area right next to your picture. So how, how would you change that? Um, well, you would go to your settings in your dashboard, go to profile, and there's a little area that's called slogan. And you'd update that. So for now, I'll just put your friendly neighborhood expert, but you can go in there and change it. And then also, I would say, make sure to update your website, whether it's your Facebook business page, because that's going to pull into your email signature um, or whatever you want, your own website, right? So make sure you update that. Click save. And then one other thing I want people to take note of is if you have any Facebook reviews, go to your review section of your Facebook. And you do. Look at that. So even just the one is all you need. And check this out, as soon as I go back into your funnel now and do a quick update, there you go, right? So fo the Facebook reviews pulled in, so is your slogan. That en will enhance your ability to, to get more phone number submissions. Make sense? So at this moment, 
this is where that phone number, before I, ask, I actually ask for send me my value, I want to make sure that you have your conversations tab, which you don't. Perfect. So this is, so if now if you get phone numbers submitted, this is how you activate that SMS. So right now what you're going to do is you're going to pick a phone number. And so in here in this conversations tab, it says pick a phone number and that'll activate your SMS. And so for you, I'm guessing, let's see, your 231 area code, is that correct? Where, and 231, Jonathan, that's where exactly is that? That's gonna be a big rapids area code. Okay, Let's see what we got. 231, we got it, boom. Yeah. Okay, so now you've got a 231 area code activated. And now for the future, like, so, you know, if I go back to your, your and you click send me my value, that's now I'm in about three minutes, I'm gonna get a text message. Gotcha. Okay, and so what's gonna be sent out? Well, when you go to your settings and you click on, the, here's your funnel settings. So here's, there's all your emails that you can edit and customize, and there's all your automations. So right here, if I click on all automations, right now, obviously you just have one, you can see that there's 13 contacts in here, eight of them in automation already. So if I click edit, you can see this, this form of automations all the way through. Now, don't worry, we're gonna work with you on a one on this. Like we're, this is just the 10,000 foot view we're kind of giving you right now. So if I were to click on any one of these emails, this is where I can go and, and change it up. And mm -hmm. FYI, <clears throat> I personally use BombBomb um, and there's other systems like Dub and so forth. But when you use Google Chrome as your browser and if you had mm -hmm. BombBomb, simply to, to change this automation up to reflect something you'd want them to see, um, as far as the video is concerned, all I'd have to do is click on the extension, click on copy for email, and just do, do a quick copy paste in there. Nice. And, all, and all of a sudden, I brought this email to life, right? Yep. Similarly, um, we have like, you have a section where you go to email signatures, and you're going to want to actually edit your email signature because that'll automatically send out whatever future email you have, right? And then lastly, text messaging. So what would the text messaging look like? Well, if you go back to that funnel automation, they're, they're going to be set up like this. Three minutes, in about three minutes, a couple minutes from now, for me, it's going to say, hi, Marcus, this is Julie. I work with Jonathan. I see you're interested in your home value. Is there anything specific about your home that may affect its value? IE updates, okay? IE updates, I'm not a big fan of. I think we can go in there and personify it a little bit, customize it, you know, give them examples. You know, hey, new landscaping, kitchen, things, you know, talk about things that would improve the market value. Um, 11 minutes later, just let me know if I can help. So that's set up 11 minutes later. I think there's a couple things we can do there too. Again, work with your coach. They'll help you personalize this. Because again, we have to start somewhere. Working with you, we can change and customize these text messaging. And then all you need to know is once they get that text message, you can see in this conversations tab, it'll actually light up yellow if they've responded. And then you're going to go down here and continue the conversation, whether you pass it over to yourself or role play as Julie, your own assistant to get you more information. Yeah. yeah. Now, before we kind of get into helping you set up ads that will get tons of leads, uh, any questions so far on what you guys have been learning would be perfect time to just unmute yourself while I take a sip of my delicious coffee. I had a couple, this is Shannon, sorry. Hey, Shannon. Hey, there you go. So I had a couple things um, come up. So they actually connected to my realtor.com account on a few of them, and I wasn't sure how that was happening. So I ended up communicating a few of them through text or that app. Yeah. So um, I wasn't, is that what's happening? Like it goes from there, like I, and then I, I was trying to figure out who Julie was, and then I figured it out, you know, because um, I had already talked to a client through text because she went to realtor.com and then um, I then Julie texts like a day later I guess you know over the weekend and then she's like well like I told Shannon Julie da 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 and then I text her back and said I apologize yada yada you know and we, we just took it from there so um, she was pleasant but you know you don't want it, people to get irritated though either you know yeah yeah no we're gonna so Shannon we're gonna I think you'll you'll have a coach I'm not sure I'll look it up um, and we'll connect to you because the, the key is just, it's a little, a little bit of a learning process in the beginning, right? Like yeah. trying to figure out sometimes it's an API issue where it connects to the realtor thing as well as your street text. And we got to figure out why that's because you're connected to your Facebook account as well. So we'll, we'll work out all those 
technical issues and then we'll actually go in there and start customizing those experiences you're providing and then you can you can find even with the systems you're already using by the way uh, we leverage zapier or email parsing so for anybody that's thinking can it work with this system or this crm and so forth absolutely it's either going to be through zapier or through email parsing and it can connect right into your own uh, crms that you already have oh that would be amazing because i use conversion Cool. And yeah. that would be really amazing. And I paused mine this morning because I had over 38 contacts. Yeah. And I have one appointment today. Um, another, you have an appointment that was automatically scheduled? I have an appointment that the, um, the conversation was started because I was out in the water with my family. And um, which I don't do that often. And I was like, of all weekends to have family coming down. But long story short, anyways, he, he emailed me his phone number. I reached out the next morning to him. We talked a little bit and um, I set up an appointment for today. So I'm all in on trying to get that appointment so I can get in person and build those relationships as well. So Shannon, do you have a video email solution so far? I have um, on my KV, what do you mean? Maybe well, I should. Because if you have like you're all, you wanna make that appointment feel more personal, reach out to that person with a video. Um, can you oh yeah, like the bomb bomb through bomb. my conversion maybe? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not sure how to do, I could do the bomb bomb video, but I usually send it through conversion. So I'm not sure how I would. Um, we'll work with you. We'll figure out who your coach is and we'll connect you and we'll kind of give you some awesome scripts that we've seen work. I, we have okay. a fun script that got one gal five listing appointments in her first week. So there's always, yeah, I know you're like, really? Um, no, yeah, it, it, it's not, you, again, guys, there's no, there's no silver lining here. Everybody is going to be unique to different. Like I, I have a, a, an ad going out in LA, uh, the area right now, and we've had three ads go out and all it's producing is addresses. So every market produces differently. You have to actually go out there and test it and split test it and AB it before anything just starts connecting on Facebook. Lead flow in case of Shannon, just sometimes you, you hit the home run route for that. And sometimes you got to test a little bit more. There's no perfect scenario here. Like you know, when we're, when we're saying 20,000 people tested this funnel and ad last um, month alone, a $2 average address, about a $6 average email and an $18 phone number. Average. So doesn't mean you can't crush that and get that way down, but also doesn't mean you won't be the, the market that's a, you know, a million dollar luxury market. That's not going to be the same. Sometimes you have to spend a little bit more aggressively. $9 a day is what we recommend to start. But some, market, I did. some markets, if you're, in, if you're in Beverly Hills or something, $9 a day is not a necessarily a good idea. Remember, because you're not competing with just real estate. You're competing with everybody advertising. And it's really an auction of the marketplace of Facebook. So if there's, if there's marketers in your area producing a lot more ads at higher spends, um, you're having to compete with those people. And this is why we need to get in there and make aggressive decisions, not let Facebook just spend your money depending on where the action is. And that's what we're going to show about to show you how to do it. Any questions there? Thank you. Yeah. yeah you're when welcome. you talk about the split testing or AB testing, are you talking about, I had watched a video you guys did where you guys ran three identical ads or are you changing up each one individually to see what works better? Both. So a split test is where you run three identical ads. Uh, A-B test is when you run a slight variation. So you start with a split, which is the same, but then you also want to do the A-B of the split. And, and it'll get a little bit more complicated as you go because, you know, it's like you're playing your hands in Vegas. You're not going to just play one hand to try to get that blackjack. Like it, it, sometimes you get lucky, but the more hands you play, the more realistic you get to get the cards you're looking for. So it's the same thing when you're, you're playing Facebook, you, you have to manipulate a little bit. And this is where we're going to teach you within the first 24 hours of what you're looking for. The obvious is lead flow, but not so much all the time. If you have two or three ads working really great, now we're going to show you something, some deeper levels. Um, so heading back into the dashboard. So you can see, I replied, Jonathan, and said new kitchen. So you would actually get into here and then restart responding to me. And you'd be like, oh, that sounds amazing. Um, let me pass this information over to Jonathan. Um, it, could you give us a little bit more details before we start working on your home value about that kitchen update? Yeah, I just got a text message a minute ago. Yeah, so you can see how that works, right? Now, is, is it possible that with this text message here, I can reply directly to this text message on my phone or do I have to go into the dashboard? You would log into street text from your phone. Okay. It'd still work, um, but I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't just reply to, from your phone because they're going to get two different text messages then. Gotcha. Right? Okay. So this, because this, they're thinking, this is the app number I just activated for you. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So again, we'll, and we'll get over, go more thorough this um, in, in a thorough explanation with your, with your one-on-one. -on -one. But so here's where you set up the split test, Jonathan, and for everybody here. So you're, you're gonna start with this one, but just so you know, this, in, in your trial, you can you have a couple options to try Street Text out right now, and we can work with you on all of them. You have this one, which is gonna be a great place for you to start. If you wanna try our buyer to seller, it's a buyer ad that still collects sellers as well. It's called the buyer to seller conversion. And then we have a, if you have any listings right now, or you wanna try to market some of your, uh, your teammates listings or someone in your office listings, this pulls in buyers phenomenally at like $2.50 a, a phone number. This is called our property listing version one lead ad. So you got three funnels you can work at. We're gonna focus real quickly on the seller one um, where everybody gets started. It's this one right here. And Ira, do you wanna to take it over and help us know how to set this one up? For sure. So um, when we click on this ad here, we've already kind of gone over those statistics, right, Marcus? So we'll click yep. on the ad, we'll go right in. Um, you'll see it pulls up the map. So what we're going to do is this is what the ad looks like on Facebook. So we want to make sure that first we think about who is it that we're targeting. So I want you to think about this for you because you're going to need this information for your coach. So what is an address that we can use that's smack dab in the middle of that 15 mile radius for you? So we'll ask Jonathan and you can think of it for yourself. Even get ready to text that email address to your coach and your coach could work on setting that up for you. But Jonathan, what address can we use that smack dab in the middle of a 15 mile radius? Um, in my area, you mean? Yeah. yeah. So an address, let me pull it up here. Or a zip code, a zip code's fine. So 49307 would be Big Rapids area code. Or nine. The zip code, yeah, 49307. 307 uh, Big Rapids, okay. So check this out. When I when I click on this, I'm gonna go, oh, go ahead, Ira, take it over from here, buddy. Yeah, so what we do is then we're gonna take that address. Let's move into the next screen because this is what our app map looks like. We wanna make sure who are we targeting because that's gonna dictate the map we show them. So we're gonna go next. We're gonna, this is where we do the ad targeting. We drop a pin. We're gonna stick the zip code right in here and we're gonna be able to pull up a, a map now. And like Jonathan, you're gonna be able to do the same thing here. You look at that big blue circle and think, is this ideal? Is this the area I'm looking to target and have influence over? And poten potentially where you are, you could also kind of hack the logarithm a bit. Like if I'm on the coast in California, I could stick half of that circle into the ocean and just target the coast. If I'm somewhere where I have rural mountains or anything, or I'm near a state line or a provincial line in Canada, I might have to move that circle to get into my more ideal area. So Jonathan gets his eyes on this and he says, maybe a little bit more north, maybe a little bit more south, maybe a little bit more east, west. And we're able to move that blue circle to the proper spot for Jonathan in his area. So what do you think, Jonathan, what does that look like? Um, that looks pretty good. I mean, I would, I'm in a pretty rural market, so I even work at a little bigger circle than that. Um, Perfect. We can you know, make I work in a four-county area. So you want to go 50? You want to go 30? How um, many? No, we're at 15 right now, right? Yeah. Let's go 25. So if you go 25, it'll open this up to that right there. Okay, yeah, that's about perfect. So you can see how this conversation is important for you to get your, because like Jonathan, he goes 25 miles, but with people I'm working with that are in Brooklyn, 25 miles yeah. is going to like <laughs> yeah. land base them. I'll keep them yeah. busy for ages. So you can see how setting this up for you is best. Now, because Jonathan didn't change, we didn't move his blue circle. So no, if you move your blue circle, when we go back to this screen, which is the imaging, on your ad, you wanna make sure that circle matches the people that are being shown the ad. Yeah. So because we made a circle a little bit bigger, we might go out a little bit more on the circle instead of right when you load the map, it comes in zoomed in. We're gonna to wanna to zoom out to make sure everybody within that range is seeing their spot on the map. So they think, oh, this, he's talking to me. They're talking to yeah. me.
So there's also the map version. You can switch over to satellite version. You can see how it's pretty dark where you're at, but on the ocean, sometimes that satellite version looks good because it pulls in and we're so used to seeing the coastal region of our area that it pulls it in well. Now yeah. the city and our neighborhood becomes important here because if I were to put just big rapids, well, now that I've done 25 miles, I'm not targeting just big rapids. Yeah. So that's where we go to a, a website called Emojipedia. So emojipedia.org is the website and you could copy a home emoji from Emojipedia and then you could paste it in this uh, field here. So it populates in the top. We say three home emojis because the map catches my scroll and then the text above that I want to draw the eye to the text above. So yeah. now when I've launched this ad, I increase the likelihood that people within that radius are going to click. And if they click, especially within the first 24 hours, Facebook starts to say, good job, Jonathan, you built an ad that looks like it belongs in the newsfeed. So one, we want to make sure we build the ad so it speaks to everyone who's seeing it and we're targeting the area the best. We launch it at $9 a day. The reason we do that is to get you to that audience within a 24 hour period. Some people will like move the budget down to $2 and I'm like, well, now we got to wait for four or five days to see whether this ad's going to get traction before we turn it off because Facebook makes the decision around that 500 mark, that reach of 500 people is when they say, Hey, let's give it this relevancy score. Now, here's the thing where Jonathan was asking before. We know the map works. We have a 60 to some odd percent click to contact ratio on that ad. So we really don't need to A, B test it. We need to land it on different audiences. So we're going to do something completely crazy. We're going to build the ad exactly the same way. We're going to change nothing. We're not going to change the pin drop. So if he's going to drop the pin in the same zip code, make it 25 miles. He's not going to change the image or the emojis. And we're going to launch it three times exactly the same way. Why would we do something like that, Marcus? Well, every time you run a new audience, you're going to have the opportunity to get a different profile clicked on. They're looking for lookalike audiences. So like, you know, like we talked about, 15 miles is massive, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. You can't honestly think that 500 people reach is going to be a representation of that area. And you don't know where the relevancy is coming from or lack of relevancy. So it could be a great day for you. And all of a sudden you get a phenomenal click flow and lead flow. And just like Shannon experienced, or it could be a bad day where that person is like, that's not me. That's not me. That's not me. Um, or just, you know, they're hiding it or putting something negative on that. And that's affecting your algorithm. So every time you run a new audience test, you're, you're tapping in a brand new opportunity to connect into like, let's, let's use the deck of cards until that ace rather than a three in the deck of cards. Like, Is there a way that we can kind of like uh, subvert that? Like the, the couple of likes you saw in that post where my broker and his wife, I text him, I was like, hey, go like this post that I just put out to kind of give it some engagement and help kind of boost it a little bit. Is that something that you can kind of get like, say friends and family members to do? Do you just kind oh, of Oh yeah, 100%, 100%. Like I, I, I do everything I possibly do. And you're gonna learn that more as you go. There are hacks and ways to, to bring more relevancy to your ad. Um, if you're a social influencer in general, you're going to want to do that. This is why you're going to want to le leverage video um, and yeah. SMS and everything for that matter, because any type of interaction you can provide is a good interaction. And then any type of explanation, because we're, we're all trying to make split second moment by moment decisions as we submit our information. And so if we can't change that, that flow in our mind as we are getting inundated with marketing to make it feel authentic and genuine, it's gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna have a lot of people interpreting it. And that interpretation is not gonna go in your favor until you're there to communicate who you are and how you can help them. So we have so many fun scripts and strategies and we have, um, I'll just kind of give you guys a heads up before we let you go. So when we connect with you as your coaches, we're gonna invite you into a Street Text Academy course. This is a free course. Um, when we, we show you how to customize the Street Text experience as well as some fun, you know, like that, that script that got Jessica five listing appointments and what she put in there. Um, we're also going to invite you into our mastermind this Wednesday. This is going to be your best opportunity to connect with our community and actually meet people who have done, you know, phenomenally. Like here, here's a gal, Donna Swansea, that we set up a course with that's done a couple hundred deals with Street Tech since she started four years ago. Um, and she goes through her how-tos and she created her own course behind it. We're also going to invite you into our Street Text Insider group. 
And this group is great for you guys because you can go straight into it and see the good, the bad, and the indifferent of what people are doing to, um, to make free text work. And we have an announcement section way up here that goes right into when people are getting listings, what they did to get it. Um, I, I, you know, you want to read through the community and the comments. So, I mean, the best thing you could do from here is connect with your coach, get into our Street Text Academy, get into our, our Facebook group and have a one-on-one. -on -one. The thing is, you're not, we're not looking to sell you on Street Text. You've got to basically sell yourself on this because you're going to have to time block appropriately and learn how to customize this experience and learn how to, to create ads. You're going to learn, like it doesn't, it's not just a set it and forget it program. It's so much a community-based training tool, which is why we're giving it away for free because we know it, it will eliminate people based on their ability to come in here and make it that, their own. Um, but we're, we're here to coach you and train you through it because we love it because we know that the ROI potential on something like this is incredible. But you got to learn the psychology behind at the top of funnel lead and how to connect with them and how to realize it's all about contribution and giving and you know, being authentic in your communication expressions um, and giving value away before obviously having an appointment right off the bat. Um, and that goes for fires and sellers and listings. It's a completely different animal and mentality than maybe what you're used to with Zillow or Truly or Realtor or any of those type of lead generation systems. So connect with your coach, become Facebook friends. We'll add you into our group. And also at the meantime, if you've got a text message from anybody, the best thing I could recommend is text them back with the zip code or address that comes to mind. And we'll actually set up your split test for you properly. And then ideally what you do is you, you let them run for the first 24 hours, three identical ads. And then we come back with you about 24 hours later and then we review those together. And we have a bunch of leads to talk about hopefully. Um, and, and then we really dive into your conversion which is, you know, that's the fun part for us. Cause then we'd be like, all right, let's get you Jonathan face-to-face. -face. Let's get you Shannon face-to-face, -face. Christina, all you guys, right? Face-to-face. -face. Um, Cause that in itself is going to allow you to get a lot of conversations to start. Any questions? I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, are we going to have the opportunity to talk to a coach one-on-one -on -one before we actually sign up for the oh. monthly? Because oh, yeah. right now I have a few questions that I would like to talk to, but not in this group. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. And okay. you know, I, that's what we want, because here's the thing. So I like the best steps is you're here. Dem demo number one. Step two, let's set up your split test with your coach. Step three, let's set up a one on one with your coach to go over that split test and then give you a bunch of resources. The Street Text Academy, our group. Um, you know, this, this schedule for our mastermind on Wednesday, our conversion work workshops, which are Tuesdays and Thursdays. We have an ad tweaks class where we kind of review your ads and help you get even better results. Um, we don't want you to just to sign up. Absolutely not. And then when you do sign up, there's a whole new dashboard and a bunch of new funnels and templates and ads. And, you know, and then it, it comes down to let's customize your automations. Let's get your integrations figured out. Let's talk about some of the key things people are using with their own CRMs or if they're adopting Street Text as their CRM and so forth. So there's a lot of moving pieces. We call it an elephant. Going to eat one bite at a time or else you're just going to quickly be like, where do I even begin? Um, and, 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 you know, something as simple as launching a, uh, an ad to be effectively tapping into Facebook. For some people, we need some practice together. Cool. Okay, Ira, take it away. What, what, do, where, what do we do? Like, what's, what's, the, uh, what's the end game here? The end game is not to compare yourself to other people's end game or killing it on social media. Everyone that's doing really well in our community started where you started. They started in a trial and then they went to our mastermind and their minds were blown and they got overwhelmed. They had leads coming in. They weren't sure how to follow up with them, but they stuck to it. And each week they added a layer to their automation, a layer to the process and their time blocking. Someone like Donna Swansea, she's done 200 plus drills. She like, she just jumped in randomly on our lab coat webinar uh, thing last week that Marcus and I did. And she was commenting like in the comments, like crazy to people. Someone was like, well, what if there's tons of people in my area that are doing this? She goes, there's tons of people in my area that are doing it. And I've done 200 plus deals with street text. Like she was in there, like just sharing what she's learned 
and imparting that to people. So it's really about connecting to the community. Oh, I heard Sorry, a little I voice. Just, I was just kind of showing people a little bit through oh, the, the video. Play. It automatically starts. <laughs> Yeah, so it's really, about, I love she even said when we were talking about video, she's like, I got a freaking lamp in the back of mine and an old closet in my video. She goes, it's just about humanizing the process. But here's the thing a lot of people don't know about Donna. She didn't get her first deal until month five. She worked with Street Text, did all the leads, collect all the numbers. We have people get listings in the trial experience, but we don't want to sell you on that because sometimes that sets you up to fail because you don't put all the automations into it to make it work in the long run because follow up is king and queen in this business. Learning how to do that and learning from our community on how to do that is the best. So we want you to have a long-term mindset on all of this. So we always advocate for a longer term plan because we know what comes with the winning attitude and mindset to make this work. You're gonna have more people in your funnel across time when you play all in. So when you log into your account, you'll see welcome to Street Text. You can scroll right down to the bottom. There's the ready to sign up button and all three of our plans are in there and you'll be able to see them and access them there. So the first one is a one year. The one year is 1920. That's the cost of street text for the entire year. And then it renews month to month after that at $160 a month. The two of the six month is the next plan. It's 1020 covers the cost of street text for the entire six months. And then it renews month to month after that at $170 a month. And then the three month is $600. It renews month to month at the end of that at three or two hundred dollars a month, month to month. So think of it like this: if you're in Canada, you pay Canadian dollars. If you're in the U.S., you pay U.S. dollars. So us Canadians are like, thank God, because that's like a million U.S. dollars. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then you gotta you gotta decide like what is your ad budget gonna look like? Like I was looking at someone's account this weekend. And he's 25 cent cost per click and she has 40 leads over the weekend. And I was like, we need to turn their budget down because they need to follow up with these people. $9 a day in that market is going to get her way too many leads to adequately follow up with them. In other, yeah. And yeah. other markets like San Diego, like you're going to be paying a little bit more. So what is your budget spend going to be? Because you have to factor that well, and, and think of this, $9 a day doesn't go, I have just ran a split test for a gal in LA and I reviewed it this, this uh, morning and she let it run for 40 hours, three ads, only producing addresses. So obviously we need to run another split test, maybe a, a slight AB to that test and probably go a little bit more aggressive. Um, I'm thinking, you know, anywhere from 15 to 20 bucks on the daily, not for to run indefinitely, but just to try to get into that market a little bit more. So it all depends on the area you're in. And that's why you need to actually test it and come along someone like us to, to help you get that set up. Now we can tell you, you've landed on something good in your area and this is what you could come to expect. Or we'll say, um, you need to split test again. Like we can find something better. I have people that are like blown away. They're like, I'm so excited. I got this many contacts. I'm like, oh, we can do better. Like if you're excited over that in your area, let us split test again because we can land on something better. So just ask any, if you've received any communication from Street Text, we always talk about the book, like who is your mama or where's my mama? Just say, are you my coach? And if they're not your coach, they'll get you your coach's link and get you. Yeah, I was going to say, you just text the last person who texted you. You know, uh, I, my, I, could, I could be guilty of feeling like an AI when I text you because I'm trying to get people, people <laughs> to do this meeting. So that's why I always advocate, like connect with your coach on Facebook yeah as much as you possibly can you go to messenger now i can send you video i can send you voicemail i can send you pdfs i mean i could do that on text too but a lot of you think i'm creepy if i do that just um, a quick question if i could yeah um so hypothetically like if say my ad is generating just way more than i can handle i just got to kind of dial it way back or like do you ever just shut it off completely to kind of get your head above water and then if I do shut it off, is that something I can just turn back on and kind of experience similar results? Or are you finding that you have to kind of like retest it again and kind of get it going again? Good question. 72 hours. If you leave, like pause and add for more than 72 hours, it could reset itself. And then you're just basically playing the game of luck again. Um, and then as, as far as ad um, budget goes, if you go from like nine to eight, you're okay. Cause if you, the key is Facebook will reset it. If you change it by more than 25% of the time. So 
I wouldn't recommend going from nine to five right away. I'd go from probably like nine to seven fifty or something for 24 hours, see how that rides. And then change that to maybe like six bucks for 24 hours, see how that rides. Um, and then, so you're not losing the ad relevancy if you've got a phenomenal ad performance. But you could always get it back. Like if once you, once you pause an ad and you go on vacation or holidays or something, you'll yeah. always be able to tap into new ad performance. Yeah. Don't ever worry that, oh, I lost my ad. No, we'll just run another split and A-B test and we'll find a good performance again. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Great questions, everybody. Um, any other questions before we let you go? This is Shannon. Hey, so I guess I have one question piggybacking off the question he had. Since I paused mine because I needed time to do to catch up, should I, and I know it's 72 hours because um, it tells you that and you mentioned it too. Should I just dial it down then, like you said? Because I'm doing $9 right now. Yes. And, dial and it just down. maybe restart it and dial it down then. Yeah, restart it, dial it down to maybe like $7.50 for for a day, see if that's too much, dial it down, down again for the next 24 hours to $6 and so forth until you find a manageable lead flow. But I'm not worried about like, if you pause it, you could always set up a new ad. I think right now for you, especially focusing on process for the next 48 hours would be mm -hmm. the best thing to do. Okay, thank you. And meet then- with and coach, Meet with your coach, develop a process. Um, that's the best thing you do. We can work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, so I did get a, just, I don't know if everybody else did this, but I do it because I, I've been doing Facebook, I'm not saying I'm an expert, but Facebook for, you know, I've been playing with it for years. I've gotten some, a lot of great leads I've closed on Facebook as well. Um, I always like if they responded, like I had a few that responded on our ad that I, my ad that I did through street text. I just go into their name, like you said, and I click them as friends. Cause now we've already had a conversation. They're comfortable with it. And then they make you your friend and then they'll see every home tour I do on video virtually and all that stuff. So I just wanted to put that out there. If someone's not doing it, I would suggest it. You're speaking my love language, Shannon. That is where it's at. If you can connect on Facebook one-on-one -on -one personally, you can use Facebook as a CRM. You can start developing lists. You can use Messenger for everything. It's, that's the next level. That's the next level. But not everybody will use their Facebook or embrace it that way. Um, so we'll, we'll work with you to see if that's you. If you're willing to, you're going to love it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Awesome. Good stuff, guys. Thanks for having us today. Um, text the last person who texted you, send them that address or zip code that comes to mind, and then we'll set up a one on one meeting with you as well for Zoom. Sound good? Have an amazing day. Yes. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye.